We're going to continue on about talking about grief. And we have Jan Finley in here once again with her amazing skills. I'm a licensed mental health counselor and a clinical certified hypnotherapist. In the first part of the loss, the most important thing that you can do for somebody is just let them talk. And a woman came in and she had lost her husband to suicide. And so she. Welcome to the Healing Spirits Here and There podcast with Terry and Amanda, where you'll hear spiritual perspectives, weird mediumship experiences, and try intuitive and trust building exercises for yourself. Join us every Friday, like and subscribe to never miss a show, and let's get started. Good morning. Happy Friday. Welcome to healing spirits here in their podcast with Terry and Amanda. And today we're <laughs> going to be talking to a special guest, Jan Finley. She's been on the podcast before. She is a licensed mental health counselor and hypnotherapist. And we're going to continue talking about grief because it's such a big, big topic. And she's going to help us go into how to help others go through grief, because sometimes we don't know what to do. And she's also going to talk about what grief looks like in her office and her experience with that to help us out. So let me get her on. <gasps> Hello, Jan. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Nice Good morning. To meet you. Nice to see you. Thanks for joining us again. When I made a client, that has experienced a loss, they'll come in in a certain stage of their emotional response. So depends on how soon after the loss that I meet them, but mm -hmm. most people go through the stage of denial for a few months because it's shocking to lose someone and you, you just don't accept it. You know, you just mm. start to imagine that person or that, you know, and loss can be divorce, it can be death, it can be any, any, any sort of significant painful experience that you feel a loss. So yeah, I meet with people that have lost a loved one or have divorced suddenly, mm -hmm. they weren't expecting it, or a teenager moves out, you know, like there's lots of different kinds of loss. So they'll come into my office because when you're in the stage, uh, stage of denial, you're in shock. You might be not believing that it really happened. This can't be true. The first thing we do when we get into a car accident, that didn't just happen, right? <laughs> like, I'm going to wake right. up now. <laughs> this is a nightmare. <laughs> this didn't just happen. So, you know, that's mm -hmm. what happens when you experience a significant loss. You go into shock. You don't believe it at first. You know, you, you might panic. You might, you know, feel... I don't know. It's just, it's a, it's a really difficult experience initially. And we've all experienced loss. We all know what it feels like. So when um, I have someone sitting in my office, if, you know, if they're crying and they're despondent, then I know we're in the initial stage of loss. Gotcha. And, yeah. And then we move through all the different stages at some point during therapy. Denial gradually diminishes over. Over time, it could be a few months, it could be longer. There's no set time on when, when we move through these stages. Like people will say, it's been a year. You should be over it. It's oh, been yeah. six months. Can't you get through this? You know, grief processes mm -hmm. individually over time. So, you know, when you've processed the denial, you know, you've processed the loss, as, as it diminishes, then you become more emotionally available to experience the reality. It's not so overwhelming and shocking. Mm. And, you know, having panic or difficulty sleeping, you know, people that are experiencing the denial shock stage have like knots in their stomach, <clears throat> tightness in their chest, mm -hmm. you know, they can't speak, they're restless, they're tense, you know, so when somebody comes in and they and they are experiencing that and i'm doing behavioral or talk therapy then i just listen my job is to mm -hmm. just hear their story and then the first mm -hmm. time they tell me their story you know it's desensitizing to the experience the more you let the less impactful it is on the body and the mind mm -hmm. so then come back and 
and for example, in the they could be angry. I'm really angry about this. I, I, I it, why did it happen? Why did they do mm -hmm. that to me? You know, all the, all the things yeah. you know that we become angry about when we grieve. You know, you're dealing with significant impact when you have a loss. So then the denial stage where you, it didn't just happen, then now it happened, and now I'm angry. So mm -hmm. I was even going to say, even like someone not having, well, every loss is a loss, but like a miscarriage, like your first baby, and then you didn't get it. And then there's denial. And then I'm not trying to go religious, but I do know in reading, sometimes they lose their uh, faith. So where was mm -hmm. God in this? Why would God allow yeah. this? And so there, to me, that would say, is that a blame? Or is that just like, why would this happen? Why would you let me have this joy in my body? And then why would the baby be gone? You can't necessarily talk to everybody about life path and stuff like that, because they're not going to listen to that. No, but, mm -hmm. you know, Terry, from the work you do and the work I do doing it, hypno is that we do have the option of being able to actually talk to the energy of the being that we lost. So for example, mm -hmm. like you just said, I've had this experience where someone's come in and they've been pregnant and they had a stillborn baby and mm. they didn't get to hold their baby. They didn't get to talk to the baby and greet the baby and share with the baby the joy of having you in my life all those experiences of being a new mom didn't happen for that person so there's this sudden emptiness and and sadness and, and anger. hormones Hor oh and then the hormones and you know there's no breastfeeding so you have that going on and it's it's such a significant loss but you know i have had the opportunity and I feel so blessed to be able to do this for people who want to um, if they come into my office and, and we've done the talking, we've done the processing, we've discussed your emotions, we've discussed all the possibilities of healing the physical body. <clears throat> and then there, the thing that's left is I didn't get to talk to my baby. I didn't get to say anything mm -hmm. to me, but there's this unsaid loss of energy exchange so when i do hypnotherapy you know we take them down to that nice relaxed where you feel peaceful and calm that their baby is with them the baby is energetically alive because you're in a different realm you're in a higher consciousness now and you can manifest that experience using your imagination you mm -hmm. are going to manifest this visualization of holding your baby and 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 then you hold your baby and the baby's looking at you and you can see the little mm -hmm. face and you can feel the warmth and the tenderness and most people just cry and just love on their babies and tell them how grateful they are to see them and how much i was looking forward to having you in my life and and i know now you're here and i'm there but you know this is where we can connect right mm -hmm. and i just let them spend as much time as they need in that position of, of, of emotionally connecting to their baby and saying mm -hmm. everything that they need to say to get it said because they didn't have that yeah. opportunity and then mm -hmm. th that's the most powerful experience i can say and that also happens if a person loses a loved one like a spouse died we were talking about like why that type of work is so effective and what Terry does is, is so helpful because it's like being able to communicate with your loved one in some way, I think is so helpful because it's like, then you can move forward a little bit because you feel like, mm -hmm. okay, they're still here. There's still yeah. a way for me to connect yeah. with them. Mm -hmm. And I feel like until for yeah. some people, until you have that, you can't really, you know, really meaningful way move forward not for everybody but that's exactly. really important for a lot of people mm -hmm. it's finding that co yes. connection yeah that because like say you didn't get to say talking. goodbye mm -hmm. sorry but if you didn't get to say goodbye yeah. and they come in and then I'm randomly mentioning the words that were said or the gestures that were done. They couldn't go across the states. They didn't get there in time, you know, but then you have these messages that come in that validate they heard you. 
um, then that's, that's huge. That's huge. Mm -hmm. Um, or some of the stuff that's going on in their life right now, it's just like, well, how would I be plucking that out if you weren't giving it to me, if you weren't in my bubble, so to speak, because you're in my presence. Yeah. So I, I yeah. agree because, you know, I, I, I send people to you and you have sent people to me. And I'm thinking in the beginning, I was like, why is, why is Jan sending me somebody? But in that sense, it was very, very, very healing because of the information that came through. And so together, I think yes. people like you and I work good together. Um, mm -hmm. You're just, you're just hella busy mm -hmm. and um, yeah, you're hella busy. <laughs> and vice versa, busy. <laughs> if you call now, you might see her by Christmas. It'll be a great Christmas present. Yeah. 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 I only do new clients in November and December. Clients. I don't oh do repeats because I need to open that up for the people who have had the loss. Oh. Um, and the holidays are so, so important or so missed when that person is not at the Thanksgiving table, not there for Christmas. You know, they want to give up their holidays. They want to stop. And the, all the other family members are going, but wait a minute, we want to go forward. We have to do something. All part of grief, you know, how people handle it. So, yeah. um, yes, I am busy, but I'm not booking into December right now. Jen, <laughs> <laughs> give me a break. Okay. We just cut that whole yeah. conversation out, right? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right. So back to the stages of grief. <laughs> um, <laughs> so then they come to, they move through anger and then they might, might start bargaining Mm -hmm. some kind of deal with God or deal with the universe or just, mm -hmm. you know, the bargaining and then network. then they move into um, depression sometimes where they're just sad mm -hmm. and they just sit in the grief. Okay. And, and yeah. I want to talk about that state mostly, um, but then the last stage is acceptance. Okay. And that's where they've come to terms with the loss and they're moving on, but how I want to help educate our audience on how they can help somebody that is grieving. You know, you sit with them during the denial, you let them throw it out there, you know, what they're mad about and this didn't really happen. And, and, and in the first part of the loss, the most important thing that you can do for somebody is just let them talk and be mm -hmm. supportive. They can't hear life is better for them wherever they are. Because for them, it's <clears throat> and, and yeah. to validate that they moved on for a reason and the next space that they're supposed to be in. And that may be true, but they, in that initial stage of grief, can't really hear. So the thing for say is, I am so sorry for your loss. This must be a very difficult time for you. I understand this is really hard. And I'm here for you. Let me sit with you. Let me hold you. Let me just be with mm -hmm. you. So that's you know, stepping into being a caregiver for someone who's had a significant loss. You're a friend, you're a, a, a relative, you're a neighbor, whoever you are. At this time, people really need you. And mm -hmm. a lot of people will show up during the initial loss. And then I've heard yeah. over time, they slowly fade away. And, you know, a month later, there's no more, you know, connection. So, I, I have this book in my practice. It's called The Five Love Languages. And this is mm -hmm. actually a book about, you know, connecting to your loved one while you're in a relationship. But the tools in this book, so the five love languages, there are five of them. And the first one is words of affirmation. So... Mm -hmm. the, I just said, I'm so sorry for your walk. You're ex experiencing something never happened to anyone. It's affirming how they're feeling. It's mm -hmm. affirming that you understand, you, you, you may not understand it, but you hear it. You, uh, you are aligning with them that they are grieving. That's hugely important. Yeah. I just Go wanted ahead. to add when my sister passed away and people would just say, I'm so sorry for your loss. I was so overwhelmed at that point. I'm like, my loss? You mean a, an entire person that died? You're sorry for that? Like, it just felt so empty. So with you adding the extra words, 
it just didn't feel helpful. And I was like, I can't even process this isn't a loss. Like this is life shattering. You know what I mean? Like it didn't, it didn't make me feel better. It made me feel worse. But the way you phrased it saying, I'm sorry for your loss, what you're going through additional things to that were helpful. Adding more words. Adding more Adding words. More words. Okay. Mm -hmm. And That's then I know, know that. You know, yeah. Because for you know, me. Because <laughs> there's really not even a response to that sometimes. Like, uh, thank you. I, you know what I mean? You're just kind of stuck there. I get it. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Um, is also point, at this point, you know, not interjecting your personal stories to whatever the person is going through that's grieving mm -hmm. to try and hold back and say, well, a few years ago when my grandma died, um, I felt this way and this way, because what they really probably need is just for you to listen at that point. But it's really easy as a person to want to try and connect with a similar story. And I don't know what you think, Jan, but sometimes it's probably better to just hold your stuff in and let right. them talk. Hmm. I don't know. But. The only time that I would interject story like of your mm -hmm. own personal loss is if you've had a similar experience that right. you could say, yes, my daughter died of cancer too in the same hospital. And, and, right. and here's some resources that right. helped me. Oh yeah. And then that's you, a good then idea. Then you can say, I understand what you're going, what you're, what you're going through. I understand. And you really do, but yeah. yeah, don't say I understand unless you really do know how that person feels about mm -hmm. that loss. I always say, you I know? can't imagine. But that's a good I point. I can't imagine. Mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think a nice thing to say too, is how like my heart is, be for you. yep. My heart's breaking for you and your family and what you're going through or something mm -hmm. like that. And to always say something, yes. cause I know some people are uncomfortable Perfect. with upset feelings. So they won't say anything to the person going through grief. And because maybe they're not that close to friends or they don't talk to them that often. But I'll just say saying something is better always than saying nothing. It helps a person feel more supported. So that's m my opinion anyways. I'm that goes to show you just with grief, everybody grieves differently. Mm -hmm. And you have a different perspective because none of ours are, are the same. Exactly. So that's what I'm saying is like mm -hmm. instead of having – someone not say anything because they're not comfortable, I would rather have them say something because then I know that they're thinking about me and that makes me feel better. But maybe somebody else doesn't want anyone to talk to them. Mm -hmm. It's everybody's different. So then the next love language that you could use is quality time. Just mm -hmm. go and sit with them. You've probably seen TV shows where someone's having a, a bad day and they, and they just sit down next to them. You know, you just right. sit down with them. And, and just be with them. You don't have to say anything. And they know you're there and that you're, you're offering time. Time is invaluable mm -hmm. for people that have something very important. And quality time, a gift that you can give anybody time, your time, sitting with them, just being with them, you know, in any capacity that they want. They might say, I like I liked it that you, you came in and sat with me. Can you come again next week or Friday? And that's that's a wonderful thing to be able to do for someone is just spend time with them. Maybe or they just want the other mm -hmm. love language is that. Uh, well, is that's what? another love language. That one is physical touch. Physical oh, touch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when you come into the the person's you know, you come into the room where the person is that has experienced the loss. You know whether you can hug them if they're a family member. You already know them. But, you know, if they're like the fetal position or they're walking back and forth or they're really despondent, you could go sit down next to them and ask them, may I give you a hug? Mm -hmm. may, I, may I touch you? I just want you to know I'm here. And that, you know, hug. giving permission to touch if you're not sure is respectful. Right. Hugs are very important in my readings. When COVID hit and are I couldn't touch her? anybody anymore, I said, 
hugs are very important in my readings. Like when they leave before COVID, it was everybody was wanting that hug goodbye. Now, what, mm. and the way they hug me or the way I hugged mm. them wasn't just like this. It was like heartfelt hug, like heart to heart, soul to soul. And I would walk away feeling like their loved one who I just brought through were, was actually the one giving them the hug. Mm. But then COVID hit and then I couldn't Aww. do it again. And I saw that there was a lot of stuff missing when they would leave. I'm back to hugging. Mm -hmm. You know, can I hug you? Yeah. And they were like, oh, please, please. They didn't want to ask me. Ask mm -hmm. me. I'll hug you. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Ooh, just one. like yeah. how people grieving don't always want to ask for help. And a lot of people will say, let me know what I can do for you. Right. And so something, if you're, um, trying to help someone instead of saying, you could still say that, but go ahead and send them a card, go drop off food, mm -hmm. do, do yeah. an action because they probably a lot of times won't ask you for help, even if they do need it. True. And that's another love language. That's acts of service. That's oh, perfect. Right. You, can bring okay. them, you can bring them food. You can bring mm -hmm. them other things that they might need that they can't get right now, like pick up prescriptions or, you know, take them to the grocery mm -hmm. store or take them to mm -hmm. a doctor appointment or, you know, clean mm -hmm. for them. A lot of people need cleaning when they're grieving because they just shut down and they don't take care yeah. of their homes. Yeah. You know, offer to walk the dog or help mm -hmm. them with any kind of act of service. That is, that is a very mm -hmm. important love language and it really helps mm -hmm. during a time of grief. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was going to say personally, and sorry to keep talking so much. Apparently I have a lot of opinions. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> Noah is sick, right? He is cancer. And so when we first found out, you know, we're grieving just a regular childhood for him and we kind of shut down and so many people were praying for us and doing all these really kind things. And then there were some people who were doing what I call prayers in action where they were come over, just sit with me all day. You know, like my dad did that. He just came over for one whole day and he just sat with me, you know, and then somebody um, dropped off. Yeah. Quality time. And then someone else is like dropping off food. And just like we were talking about the acts of service, but you know, I think of those as prayers in action when there's, mm, you know, more good than just prayer, they go do something or, or text you and just say, Hey, I'm thinking about you today. Can I drop by for a minute after work or something? And, um, that's just so nice. I just was blown away, you know, how many people did that. And it really, even though it's a hard situation, I feel so supported and loved that it's just really nice. And of course, you know, Noah is still here and he, as far as we know, is going to be here. So it's not the same as losing yeah. someone, but there still is some, you know, sadness and grief that goes along with it. There Almost is grief. Someone, someone sent a cleaner to our house on a chemo day. So when we got home, it was clean here. Like just incredible nice. things, you know? Yes. And when a person is just, just emotionally empty because they've been crying and grieving so much. It's mm -hmm. so nice to just not have to talk about it. Just come and, and be with me, sit with me, cook with mm -hmm. me, watch a movie with me, you know, pet mm -hmm. my dog with me. You know, we don't have to talk because I, I don't have yeah. anything left to say. I'm just deficient in my ability to tell you it is. You know, I just need to sit and be and your time with me is valuable. What a gift. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, those nurses, that providence, you know, what a gift to those patients because they were the only people, you know, doctors and nurses and orderlies and whoever the staff were at the hospital were the only people allowed in the room. The time that they could give to those patients was invaluable. And I know they were stretched and at that time with those people, they were the last people to be with some of them. And, you know, what a gift that they were able to go over and hold their hand, you know, brush mm -hmm. a piece of hair off their face, just stay in there. A human being is here for you. 
you know? Right. Thank God. Well, that, yes. And that would be cool. any, any hospital, but I get what you're saying. Well, especially during going. COVID, right? Because the right. family members weren't allowed in. Yes. I can't. Oh, it's so terrible. Yes. Can't imagine that. No. It made everything yeah. so much worse. So I, I wanted to uh, share an experience of um, what loss can look like during a hypnotherapy session, if that's okay. Yeah, please. So imagine... Um, yourself, you know, think of like, if you could just use your own imagination to feel what it's like in your body to have experienced a loss. And we've all experienced loss, your best friend, your, your animal, you know, there's so many losses, but so imagine this is a scenario that happened in my office. A woman came in and she had lost her husband to suicide. And so she mm -hmm. didn't get to say goodbye you know, just one day he drives mm -hmm. off and then you don't see him again. And she was, she'd gone through denial. It didn't happen. That's not him. Then anger. How could you leave? You know, what have you done? You know, look what I have to do now. I have to clean up this and that. And just through all the stages of grief um, to that point. And so when she came into my house, she said, I need to move on. I need to figure out how to let go of this heaviness that I'm carrying around. So I, mm -hmm. I you know, put her into a nice state of relaxation and then I had her imagine you know that she's on the beach which is most, most favorite place to go to relax and I said I want you to feel that weight that you said I, I want to let go of this weight where do you feel it in your body and she said it's in my torso and I said okay okay I want you to imagine that you can lift that weight out of your body and that's going to be space in front of you what do you see and she said it's a big block of ice it's that coldness mm -hmm. of grief, that cold, blocked mm -hmm. energy of not being able to live because I've been grieving so much. I, I stored it in my body metaphorically like a block of ice. Mm -hmm. Beneficial. And she said, no. And I said, would you like to transform it then into something that will be more loving and supportive for you? And she said, yes. And I said, okay, so let's mm -hmm. imagine that block of ice is, what do you see the ice turning out? What do you see? And she said, it's vaporizing into this beautiful white sparkly energy. And it was healing energy that once the ice was all melted, she was able to then bring that healing white misty energy into her body. And it went into her body and it replaced that weight of ice that she'd been carrying around all that time. And then, of mm -hmm. course, we did what's called gestalt therapy. Gestalt therapy in, in a regular therapist's office is often called chair therapy. So you imagine mm -hmm. whoever it is you want to talk to is sitting in an empty chair in the room with you. But when you're hypnotized, mm -hmm. we're going to actually draw in the energy of the person that you want to talk to. So then she brought in her husband. He was walking down the beach toward her. And his energy was standing in front of her and she was able to talk to him and share her emotional experience of the loss and get them mm. tell him how his behavior affected her and how she had to carry this weight of ice in her body that was making her sick and she had to transform it and heal herself. And then now she was in a better place to be able to talk to him and share with him her experience of losing him. And you know, it's wonderful about being in this other higher realm of consciousness, which is accessing the subconscious mind, is that you are able to actually talk to the person that you've invited in. So he was able mm. to hear her and actually respond to her. And you wouldn't believe how amazing yeah. that, that is. Wow. To have the person that's got a baby can say, I'm sorry yeah. that I was in your in your body for nine months and that I wasn't able to stay. Whatever the message is, mm. it comes through during that process. And then the husband wow. will say, I'm sorry, I was in pain. I couldn't handle it any longer. Whatever his experience was of needing to leave, he left. And, mm -hmm. and then, you know, they were able to process that experience together in that higher realm of consciousness. Oh, my yeah, gosh. So that's very rewarding. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah, so when they leave your office, oh, my gosh. Yeah. You must be floating. And such yeah. relief. Well, that's what I, I mean, sent up to Terry. They can it, actually, you know, 
Yes. Yeah. But it's, it's, they process their emotions and they're able to say those words that haven't been heard. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. very, yeah. And like big, when we talked to um, Michelle, she had said on the last podcast, like for her in the beginning processes, she wasn't ready to talk yet because it was too overwhelming, probably too new. Sure. And so depending on like where you said yeah. the different stages of where people come in, they're ready for different things. And probably not a lot of people aren't ready to yeah. even do that yet for could right. be a year or two. Who knows? Everybody processes it different, yeah. but gosh, when you're ready, you need to be able to release some of that and connect with the person. And, and you know, it's and interesting. You may think you're not ready or you're ready, whatever, whenever yeah. the time is, because I've taken people to their safe place just to work on anxiety, for example. They're not even yeah. there to talk to a, a, a deceased person. But this lady, for the first time I ever hypnotized her, she's laying on the beach, you know, our, our beach, just enjoying this beautiful experience of laying on the beach. What's going on? And she said, my mom talked about mm -hmm. her mom or her need to talk to her mom. And yeah, but her mom came up to her. She just immediately felt blessed that her ancestor her mother had chosen to join her on that wow. beach wow she was, that's she came so out cool this, I, I did not expect that oh my god it is yeah. cool. Yeah. So, you know that was that was an opportunity to, for a, a deceased person to be able to connect with us you got to be in the right state of mind yes. sometimes for them to yeah. be able to connect yeah. with you Perfect. yeah that's really cool and you know what she said to me one other time when I hypnotized hmm. her, she goes, why is your cat here? And I go, what do you mean? <laughs> she goes, I know you told me about your cat had died last July. That big puppy Aww. white caramel colored cat, she's here. <laughs> and so my cat is an emotional therapy animal. On the other side. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that is a crack <laughs> up. But that happens to people a lot. Their pets will show up on the other yeah you know, when they're hypnotized and that's then, for sure and it's nice yeah 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 well pets are our so, little family members i always like to look for signs especially for validation and as we're sitting here i i am i peripheral peripheral of vision i think i see something moving outside but i need to focus on you guys and then all of a sudden that movement stopped and i thought oh i must have been making that up and then all of a sudden there's double movement out this window right here. And there's two deer going right past my window. Mm -hmm. And I like it when the nature people show up, the nature oh. animals show up when we're doing stuff like this, or if I, they show up in a reading, it's just oh. validation. Oh. Um, we'll have to look up deer and put it out there. Maybe it was meaningful for somebody out there that needed to hear a deer um, significance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. I'm sure of it because deer show up a lot when we, when I hypnotize somebody and I take them to their sacred space, which is generally where we go when we're going to do the deep emotional work. We do the safe place for security and protection and to feel peaceful. And then we move down to the sacred space and that's when the animals show up and mm. it's deer a lot of the time, deer and butterflies for some reason. So mm. I got my book out. And dear is lure yeah. to new adventures, move gently into new areas, follow the lure to new studies, practical pursuits bring surprising rewards. Kind of, kind of fits with what we're talking oh. about. Moving forward, doing things, yeah. how mm -hmm. we adjust to things. Yeah. Slowly, it's said. Mm -hmm. mm. yeah. I saw, Indeed. I remember I saw two yeah. deer uh, the same week my sister passed away. Mm -hmm. and you know what's funny? Right before this podcast, I was moving something on my counter and my grandma's ring flung out at me and I've been looking for it and didn't know where it was. So I just put it on before the show because I was like, oh, grandma can do the show with me. Isn't that funny? I've been wondering yeah. where the string was, feeling like the worst granddaughter yeah. ever. <laughs> it shouldn't have been on the counter. Well, the dog like could have eaten it. 
It was not on the counter. I have these little drawers and I pulled the oh. drawer out and it fell out and the ring popped out. And I was like, oh, oh I didn't know that wasn't there. But, oh, you know, I'm glad you have little, it. I know. That's There's talking a little bit about signs and stuff too. Like, you know, I have a friend who after her mom died, she was like, I want signs that my mom is still alive. And so for me, I'm going to say, let it be dimes if I see a dime. So she kind of put a, 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 just chose what she wanted to see as a sign. And now she gets dimes everywhere. Isn't that That's funny? Cool. So That's we can cool. do stuff like that too. And like my sister on her uh, passing away day and on her birthday, the first couple years after she died, an owl would show up in my backyard. Wow. Ooh, I thought that was pretty cool, like on the day. So it's like, that's so significant. Wow. That doesn't just happen. Anyway, so people can look for signs and ask for signs. It's a like validation that, that your sister's still with you. But listen, mm -hmm. we're all talking and there was two yeah. deer. But I'm thinking, mm -hmm. well, I could just shut my mouth. It has nothing to do with grief, right? And But yet I find, Terry finds signs in everything. And mm -hmm. But then you sit there and share that two deer was significant to you. Followed yeah. by, I found grandma's ring. Mm -hmm. I'm just yeah. saying, right? <laughs> right, there's signs everywhere. You know those, right. those soul cards that I use in my office? Have I ever used them with yeah. you, Terry, the soul cards? Do um, I have a minute to get laid up out. them? Because I want to show sure, you. Sure, sure. Huh? Sure. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I sent you the okay. thing. These soul cards. These are, wait, where's my camera? Over here. Not there. These cards <laughs> Not are there. Deborah Chaffee. Not there. <laughs> well, it might be there, but. Her... All right. Let me find the card. All right, okay, do it again. Put it here in front it of is. your face. Okay. So this card, cool. it comes up a lot. Can you see it? Yeah. Yes, it's a tree okay. with a deer. So it's like the, the person is in, in the, the subconscious mind. We're relaxing and, relaxing and resting. And there's the deer. Deer, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. That deer comes up a lot in here. Yeah. And so what is you, the meaning for that one? You said the, well, it depends on the person, you know, like they oh. interpret it. But for me... It's like connect to your spirit animal. It's ground and center under the tree of life. You know, don't forget to connect to the earth. Stay grounded. And when you're grounded and relaxed and centered, then you can access the higher consciousness and communicate mm. with your spirit animal or your deceased one. Right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then I let them interpret it too, you know. Perfect. But if they I ask like for that mind, just went right around. Mm -hmm. How funny yeah. you took it too. It's in, it's in your readings and it comes up a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. truly. So I have this poem. When I used to work in the WIC office at Snohomish Health District, I worked with pregnant and parenting women. And many times the women would miscarry or, or have a stillborn baby. And mm -hmm. we, our team decided that on occasion we could read them this poem or give it to them to take home. But okay. it's called God's Lent Child. And I don't know who wrote it, but this is how it goes. I'll try to hold it up so I'm looking at the camera. Okay. <laughs> I'll lend you a little while, a child of mine, God said, for you to love the for you to love the while she lives and mourn for when she's dead. It may be one or two years or fifty-two or three, but will you till I call her back, take care of her for me? She'll bring her charms to gladden you, and should her stay be brief, you'll have her lovely memories as solace to your grief. I cannot promise she will stay since all from earth return, but the lessons taught below I want this child to learn. I've looked this whole world over in search of teachers true, and from the things that crowd life's lane, I have chosen you. Will you give her all your love, nor think the labor vain? nor hate me when I come to take this Lent child back again. I fancied that I heard them say, Dear Lord, thy will be done. For joys thy child will bring, the risk of grief will risk. We will shelter her with tenderness, we'll love her while we may, 
and for the happiness we've known forever grateful stay. But should thy angels call for her much sooner than we've planned, we'll brave the grief that comes and try to understand. That's called God's Lent Child. That's very, very touching. Oh, well, yeah. And you yeah. can you know you can insert husband, cat, son, whatever. Yeah. That was really, really nice. Thank you for sharing that. And like you said, people can change it from her to whoever they want. And it's beautiful. Yeah, it's meaningful. Yeah. Yeah. There's one thing I want to add to is like when people are grieving, you can't fix anything for them. So all you can do is right. be there, you know, just yeah. be there for them in whatever way that is. Like Jan went over all the different ways that you can mm -hmm. show up for someone but you know we can't fix it so just go give them a hug or think about if i was going through this what would i want and and start there if right. you're not sure where to exactly. start and and you can do something everyone can mm -hmm. do something please don't not do anything because you don't know what to do just simply right. your your presence just showing, mm -hmm. knocking on the door and, and giving them a, a banana bread, you know, just saying mm -hmm. I'm here for you if you need anything. That's it. And then in a month or two, send a card. Cause like Jan said, is people show up in the beginning and you're so shocked and in disbelief. It's, it's great. But then when you start to process months later, it's almost worse sometimes I think because no then sense. you're starting to live with the reality of it. And it's so, overwhelming and depressing that right. you really need support later too mm -hmm. you know so it's a good yeah. time to cards, do something for someone the cards are I gone think, the meals are gone mm -hmm. yeah yeah but yeah. i think that um i really really in a lot a lot a lot of readings feel like we cause our own diseases and mm -hmm. it's usually stomach gut digestion um, sometimes heart because we hurt so bad because we were hurting, but we're not using a lot of uh, throat problems come in. And then, then that's not them using their words. They don't want to talk about it anymore because they can't cry. Right. I once had somebody tell me that if yeah. you could talk about it without crying, then you're on the way to being mm -hmm. where you need to be. We're never going to forget. They'll never forget. They're not going away. But like we had the mm -hmm. grief at Christmas time, how we honor them, then that's what you do. Um, how mm -hmm. um, Michelle honors her daughter by all the different things that she does. If we see that we're doing stuff in a positive way for awareness, if it ain't for other people, make it for yourself. Absolutely. Then mm -hmm. that kind of helps mm -hmm. us, you know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But to really People use your words, either to a counselor, write it down in a journal, um, I, you know, just write it out so you are talking and not burying it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just get really. it out of you somehow. Right. Yeah. yeah. Write a letter. You know, like, yeah. Nice. Light it, write, write it, burn it. I don't care mm -hmm. what they do with it. Just we get it to out another somehow. Heat. Yeah. Just saying, I wrote this letter to the person I lost, and I'd like to read it to you, mm -hmm. to put it on the universe, and mm -hmm. and then it gets it gets sent out into the universe. You one would yeah. think that they can hear it somehow, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Jan. We love hearing from you, and you have such good information because you really deal with this on a a regular basis with people, and so. It's good to go yeah, over. It's a pleasure to be on your, your show. Thank you for, for inviting me. Yay, you're, you're welcome. welcome. You're always welcome. Yep. Yeah. Okay, All guys. right, Jan. Bye. We'll see you later. Bye, Jan. Bye. 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 <laughs> oh, that was another good show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she got me. <laughs> I know. She got me good, too. I almost grabbed my uh, tissue. My tissue over here. See, I but. told you today was a t yes. Last week was a tissue, and then this week is a tissue. Mm hmm. Yeah. Anyway, so we love you guys. We hope that helped um, somebody out there deal with what they're going through, or help somebody else.
So or just good information to have for the future too. Yes. And if they want, they can leave in the comments how they have what they have done in their grief because other people or message me or put it, you know, send me a message and I'll put it out mm -hmm. there. These are things that help everybody. Maybe something they didn't think about. Maybe it was like, mm -hmm. oh, I'll try that writing. Maybe I will do X, Y, and Z. Yep. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Give your two cents. What helped you or how did you help others? Mm -hmm. Whatever you have to add. You know, it was different because when my grandma passed, I'm, and she passed before I was doing mediumship, but I've always had the belief that um, if someone was in pain, my grandma, um, I haven't lost a child, that's horrific. Um, but in her sense, you know, we kind of always know that they're going to pass. And when she did and the pain or, you know, her being angry about stuff, I knew she was going to a good place. I knew she was happy. I knew that she was going to have a reunion with her mom and dad and all the grief of the people that left before mm -hmm. her. So I had a different process on it. And then after I started doing readings, it wasn't that it wasn't hard for me. And I felt guilty about not crying for days that my grandma that I took care of her for 14 years, I felt like I cheated her because I wasn't mourning her like I thought I should have. But then when I started doing mediumship and my, and my belief system just grew a little bit more, it, it made it easier for me personally. It's not going to make it easier for anybody else. They all do it differently, but that's how yeah, I think about it now. Change. Like a, it did. your perspective is like, I'm communicating with these people. They're mm -hmm. still here. Right. And I can't no. communicate with Graham or my dad or whatever. They give me signs, sometimes in a dream, never in meditation, um, different signs I get from them. And then that's the ones that make me cry. But mm. for a long time, I hit, I hurt myself bad because I wasn't thinking I wasn't as hurt as I should have been. But I was, mm. I was, I just wasn't showing it. But I knew that her being in pain every day wasn't what I would want to be. So right. I was completely happy with her celebration of life saying that here she's eating Kentucky Fried Chicken up in spirit and she's talking mm -hmm. to all her friends and she's hugging her mom again. So mm -hmm. it was different for me. Yeah. And maybe as you know, society grows with this kind of knowledge, us knowing that death is a word, but not really a a death of the soul because no. like we've talked about before, we're energy and right. energy cannot be destroyed. It can only right. be changed. And, and so on. exactly. And so maybe the idea of death can change eventually to be maybe not something so sad. I mean, right. it's always going to be sad because we're going to miss them. You know, and the circumstances are the different. Circumstance. Right. The circumstance makes a big difference too. But just knowing that they are still here, they're now somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And we are able to, in some way, have a relationship or maintain a relationship. It is not at all the same as it was. But instead of having death always be this horrible, mm -hmm. scary, forever thing, Maybe eventually we can come to see that there is something different and we just don't know about it, you know, right. and so to change our perspective of death right. and maybe it, it can be beautiful sometimes when mm -hmm. somebody has lived a long, beautiful life and they're just ready to go. Right. And, you know, maybe that could be a beautiful thing. Now they're with their family and they get to mm -hmm. do new things. And I don't and know. Still watch over us and give us signs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I believe that, but you're right. It's every, everyone's different. Every, you know, a murder, a suicide, a car accident, a DUI, a, a drunk driver. And especially mm -hmm. on drunk drivers, when the people who did the crime and killed the persons, they get boo-boos and they're in the hospital and they are not in jail for life and they still get to live their life, but they took other people's totally different scenario. Yeah, absolutely. Not okay. Not okay. No, none of, none of those are okay. No. Yeah. So when I say it could be beautiful, I don't, I'm not trying right. to be insensitive at all. Nope. Did not think you were. Um, You're talking about different scenarios. Just different like my scenarios. Grandma. Yeah. And even like my grandma, you know, she passed away. She fell asleep. She passed away in her chair. 
no pain, no right. anything crazy. I'm right. like, my goodness, that was the best way to go. Had a great day, hung mm -hmm. out, fell asleep. Right. Could you ask for anything more peaceful than that? I don't no. know. <laughs> no. It's like, how did she plan that out? I would right. like to do the same. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. It just, there's just a lot of death in the world. And I just feel for yeah. everybody out there that has gone through anything, a pet, anything, uh, anything. Yeah. It's all so oh. hard. None of it well, feels natural. Mm -mm. Yeah. So anyways, we love you all. We hope that you get something out of these shows. And if you do leave a comment and we will see you next week. From my heart to yours. I love you. Mwah!